Hi, this is Jim from Como Machine. Today we're going to talk about the tool touch option available on your Como routers. The tool touch system comes on every Como machine. It allows you to accurately measure your tools in your carousel repeatedly so you can produce quality parts throughout the entire lot. There's three major components to the tool touch system. We focus on the physical space that you're manipulating, the components in the system, and the software. So before we get started with the actual measurements, let's see where the numbers actually come from. The space that we're manipulating is the space between your tabletop and your spindle gauge line. In our case, it's about 13 and 7 eighths inches. As you can see here. And I'm also gonna show you the space between the, the tool tip, in our case, the calibration tool, and the table. In this case, it's about 8.9 inches as well. Next, we'll talk about the components within the tool touch system mainly the tool touch probe and the calibration tool. Now the tool touch probe can be damaged through the course of using it for many years. If this surface of the probe is not perfectly parallel with the bottom of the probe itself, you can get inconsistent readings. You can imagine if it's exaggerated, but sitting at an angle like this, and you touch off over here versus touching off over here, your values are gonna be drastically different. The same thing with your tool touch stand. If this has been knocked uh, over the years and is crooked or bent in some way, it will also provide inconsistent readings. So make sure that those two components are in good condition. The next is the calibration tool. This is calibrated to 4.975 inches from this surface to the tool tip. That is the only thing that's calibrated on this tool. The diameter is very close to three quarters of an inch but it's not guaranteed to be exactly three quarters of an inch. So some people like to use this to find fixture offsets and things like that, but it's really only calibrated in the length. Before we get started with the calibration routine, I wanna share a safety tip that I practice myself every time I'm on the machine. And that has to do with the manual pulse generator or handheld controller. When you're walking around the machine and this is in your hand, always have the axis selector on zero. If it's on Z, for instance, and you accidentally spin it as you're walking around, the machine moves and it can compromise yourself or the machine. There are two software packages associated with the Tool Touch. One is Calibrate, and the other is the Tool Touch software itself. The first one we'll be using today is Calibrate. Click on this one here and verify that it says Calibration Utility up here. The Tool Touch software screen looks very similar, so we don't want to confuse the two when we're trying to measure tools later on. Before using your Tool Touch, you should verify that it's communicating correctly. You can do this by checking this probe status box right here. When you press down on the probe, a little check should enter the box. If it's not doing that, you need to check the connections and communication with the probe or contact your FOMO service rep. Once it's verified that it's working, you can click on Tooling Settings. The data in this table right here is for a standard single spindle machine with a 12 pocket tool changer and a nine line drill bit. Please review this data to make sure it matches if that's your machine type. Once that's verified, you can click on Probe Settings and see the data in this table. This is standard data. The only thing you need to check is your machine type. Front to back is a standard moving table machine, such as an extreme. Left to right is a twin table machine. And the last one is for traveling gantry machines, such as a Solution or a Mach 1 GT. If you are programming in millimeters, these values right here need to be changed to millimeters or millimeters per minute Next, we'll go to measure tool. This will actually initiate the calibrate sequence. Our calibration tool is in pocket six, so select pocket six. And we, we will put in our approximate 
probe location in X and Y, 122.5 and 20.8. And we also put in our calibration tool length, which is 4.975. We will click on measure tool next. It'll give us a prompt that our Z value work coordinate is being reset to zero. So just to show you what that's doing, you go to your offset settings page, this G55 Z value will be changed to zero. There, just changes to zero. Now we have a prompt to press cycle start because it's flashing. So click cycle start and the sequence will begin. The first thing the software does is position itself over the probe, but our prompt here is to move the reference tool, the calibration tool, to the table top surface. So we'll move it to our the top of our black phenolic table. We'll roughly position it outside here. And now we'll get closer and use the paper to fine tune the Z value. Be sure to always turn it to zero again before you position yourself underneath there. Move the Z down. Using the paper as a feeler gauge. Pinch the paper in there just ever so slightly and bring it up one thousandths. Now the paper is three thousandths, so we have to accommodate for that. So we'll move back down three thousandths, one, two, three, and then head back to the HMI. Once you position it over the table, press continue and cycle start. It will record that value and position itself over the probe once again. Now the prompt is telling you to move the tool tip about a quarter inch above the probe. Click continue and cycle start and the routine will begin. Once it's at this point of the routine, you'll get a read return zero. Click OK here, and it will populate the Z value that is calculated right here. And click OK again, and now the sequence is complete. You can click exit and be done. Two ways to verify that the calibration sequence has been executed correctly is to check your G55 value. We've calculated 13.893 inches, which is very close to what we measured with the tape measure earlier on in the video. We could also check the file that it's written. So if you search in the C drive for tool touch system and go into that folder, you will see a settings file that should be written uh, at the very near time that you've completed the sequence. Open this file and look at the fifth digit, the fifth character from the bottom. This is the height of the probe that it's calculated. Most probes are right around 3.1 inches in, in height. If you have another value here that's drastically different, the calibration sequence did not complete properly and you'll have to do it over again. Now that the tool touch is calibrated, we can begin to use it to measure tools. I like to measure the calibration tool first because I know that its length is 4.975, so I will check that when we're done. I'll go to the offset settings page and the offset page that houses my tool length offsets and go to number six and change that to zero just so I see a new value when it does do the measuring. Then I will go to the tool touch software And this says tool touch system on it. It does look very similar to the calibration utility, so make sure that we've opened the right one 
by seeing it says Tool Touch System here. Once in here, we click Measure Tool. We'll pick tool number six, which is the calibration tool, and click Measure Tool again. The software flashes Cycle Start, which is prompting to you to click it. So we click it, and the calibration tool will position itself over the probe. Using the MPG, move the tool tip down to the probe about a quarter inch away and continue with the prompts on the screen. Continue and cycle start. The routine will begin and you can look at the offset page and you can see it's now recorded a measurement of 4.9738 inches, which is about 12 tenths off from perfect. Not too bad. And you could always continue to calibrate it until you get a perfect measurement if you want it. We also get a prompt that says remove probe from table. So we'll do that. Now we can click OK, the table will index out and we'll be done. Everything that we've shown thus far has generated a positive tool length offset, which is representative of the actual tool length of the tool. For those of you that are using negative tool length offsets, these are the changes that you will need to make to generate them. In your G55 setting, change this value in the Z to zero, and that's it. Do a tool touch and you'll get a negative tool length offset. You can see we've measured negative 8.9182 inches, which we cannot validate as any actual measurement. However, if we go back to the beginning of the video where I measured the distance between the tool tip and the top of the table, that air gap between those two surfaces was roughly 8.9 inches. It turns out that our system has measured it exactly at 8.9182 inches. And that's how you get negative tool length offsets. Remember, you could always buy a new tool touch or a new calibration tool by contacting our service department. If you need further assistance with the software, you can contact our applications department. Thanks for joining us today and have a great day.